Here's a quick look at the plans, front elevation, side elevation. Snap a picture. With the slat type frame, you will feel the slats through the mattress. Also, slats are not enough support for those memory foam mattresses that do not include a box spring. Build a solid frame for solid sleep. In this video, I will show you how to build this king size bed frame and headboard. The total cost for materials was $270 and $90 more if you want the lights and dimmer switches. This is a really easy DIY and I will supply you with the total materials list and cut sheet. All materials can be bought at one hardware store and some stores will even offer cutting to the exact cut sheet. Some design features are this toe kick, modern design and I think it's a perfect blank canvas if you wanted to add a leather headboard or any other materials to switch it up but this will give you a basic design. Between each step I will be using a transition showing you what materials are being used so that it's really simple to follow along step by step. I've built this bed a couple of times with the exact list with total success. So order up the materials and let's get started. Here is an image of the materials list and electrical list. Snap a screenshot. Here's the cut sheet. Each transition will show you the materials used at each step. So the base is 66 and a half by 72 inches. You can see here, I've got some other stuff going on in this project and there's my base sitting on the ground. I've used two by six spruce lumber framed at 24 inch on center spacing. I screwed this together with three and a quarter inch wood screws. Designed to fit a king size mattress 76 inches wide by 80 inches long. Toe kick part of base. This is a two by six that's gonna kinda of wrap the perimeter. You can see here I'm gonna start with the front which is cut exactly the same length as the studs. And then I'm gonna attach it just like an L bracket sort of situation. Once finished the 2x6 perimeter, install three 2x4s on top of the other supports. Check base for square by measuring the diagonal corners. Use 3 inch screws or nails securing it to the base. Body of base. Build four 74.5 inch by 9 inch stub walls or pony walls. Checking my plate length, which is 74 and a half. And I've got my plates all lined up and I'm putting a 16 inch on center spacing layout on it and beginning to assemble each stub wall. Once through with that, set right over top of the two by fours and Flush it up to the front of the 2x6 and fasten down with 3 inch screws or nails. And here's a sneak peek of the toe kick design. Like I said, I think it's a really good design because you're not ever having to clean underneath the bed. This is looking all good. Time to move along to the headboard. Headboard. Frame a 74 and a half inch by 72 inch high wall using 16 inch on center spacing. The four extra two by fours at 74 and a half inches will be used to connect the headboard to the frame. Now when attaching the headboard, I used an additional two two by fours at the top and two two by fours at the bottom to shim it away three more inches. I did this so that I could screw the headboard into the solid stock of the two 2x4s laminate together. Use 6 inch wood screws to connect the headboard to the base. That way you can separate them in the future if you have to move them out of the room. 
Once happy with the substructure, it's time to cover with MDF. Here is the detailed MDF cutting list. Starting with the headboard, use the 3 and 3 quarter inch wide pieces to wrap the outside face. Then use the 10 and 3 quarter inch pieces to wrap the body. I'm using a 18 gauge brad nailer. Then I will add 16 gauge nails at corner locations. Use glue or silicone on all joints and substructure surface. If you don't have a brad nailer, you can use inch and a quarter to inch and a half finishing nails. Where the top meets the base and where the back sheets go over the headboard, don't worry about the joint where the two materials connect. There's going to be a trim piece that goes around there. So during the sanding process, flush it up near perfect, do all your painting and priming, and then we come back after to put these pieces on. I find if you put them on ahead of time, then you can't get as much paint smooth behind it. Time to sand the MDF. I'm using an orbital cordless sander and a hand sanding sponge. You're just gonna go for a rough sand truing up all of your material and go over top of all your nail holes. MDF is really harmful to your health, so make sure you're wearing a respirator and all, the, all your personal protective equipment. Everything's cleaned up, it's time to prime. I'm using a wood primer designed for this MDF and I'm just gonna put a quick coat on it because MDF does tend to soak up a lot of paint so I'm gonna actually go cover the whole thing twice because by the time I got done it was already dry here's a quick look ending day one I'll leave this for the night to dry and right when I get back tomorrow I'm gonna start up on patching and working the nail holes After the primer's done, time to start with the patch. This is where I'm really going to pay attention to the joints that I want to disappear and all the nail holes on the headboard. When the paint's dry, time to work on the lighting location. So I'm just going to rough in where I'm going to put these pan boxes to hold the wall lights. I do this work now because if I leave it till the very end, I might scratch the paint finish. I will be showing you a more detailed look at the electrical once we are finished with the paint. Final sand and paint. You can see I'm just going to use my sanding block because at this stage you should be really, really smooth with everything and happy with everything. My MDF is looking really good. Once paint is dry, I will install the final trim covering the joint around the perimeter. You could install this trim at the same time as the MDF install. I find it much easier to paint with it not in the way. Final trim. Here is the final trim, one inch wide, that's going to go around the top end perimeter around the bed. You can see that fine line that's there from where the two materials meet and this is a clean way to finish it off nice and easily. And if the area that you have the bed in is small and you've got to move it out, you can tear it apart and re-put it back together and this trim will go right back on covering it. If you are not installing the lights, enjoy your new bed frame and headboard. What a perfect fit! 76 inch wide by 80 inch long king size mattress. Now let's move on to switches and lights. I really think the lights added a big difference to the way that the bed looked. Here's our materials, two dimmers, two boxes, 14-2 wire, appliance rated cord, and a junction box. I'm also going to need 40-40 connectors to connect to 
the pan boxes and the junction box. I'm drilling with the hole saw a large circle two inches in diameter so that when I attach the 4040 connector to the pan box it's got space to go through. Make sure you don't go too large with your holes or you won't be able to attach the pan box. It's got a small area in which the screws are going to go through. If pan boxes don't work for the lights you've chosen, you can use a regular octagon box and rough it right into the wall. Now I'm going to cut in my switch location. I've marked out the exact size of the box and you can see here I'm using my jigsaw to cut through the 2x4 material and the MDF material. This device box has a nice 45 degree slant on the back of it. Now I'm going to attach my wire into my 44 connector on the pan box and then reattach it. I can't get my screwdriver up into the MDF to tighten the 4040 so that's why you've got to put the wire in first. Now set into your device box, pull another wire out to get to the lower junction box. Replicate the same thing on the other side. That junction box there is where you're going to hook in your appliance rated extension cord and that will be the final connection into the wall receptacle. There is lots of different wall lights so make sure the pan boxes work with the base of your wall fixture. If not, you're going to have to rough in an octagon box just like a full house rough in. Just going to install the LED dimmer switch. I find dimmer switches are quite large so you really have to make sure you stuff your wires in there nice and fold them in perfectly so that you have no troubles getting the switch in. Now down at the junction box, stripping the wires, twisting them together and then attaching the appliance rated cord. I've drilled a 3 8 connector into the front of a cover plate, brought the cord through the connector and mered it to the wires. I'm using 14-2 house wire to wire this up. Make sure your appliance rated cord is also 14 gauge wire. I'm going to begin to install the wall fixtures. I'm not getting you really close to the install on this, but if you've got any questions about that, I do have other videos installing wall lights and switches and all sorts of electrical stuff, so check those out. This is a really neat feature, like I said, to be able to shut the light off right beside the bed, right before you're going to sleep. And you can see in the room we didn't have space for reading lamps or anything for nightstands besides, so this just worked perfect. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave me a message in comments. Please check out the coach's other DIY videos. Thanks for watching. Meet Tim Pierce, a Harley driving, tattoo loving construction expert who's on a mission to help you do it yourself. From plumbing to electrical, framing to painting, Tim's the guy you want around. There is unforeseen things like this in, in everybody's home. It's crazy to even bother putting it in if you're gonna do it so crappy. The construction coach is here to walk you through that home construction project, offering tips and tricks you won't find anywhere else. This technique can be used all over the place. Get step-by-step -step advice from the tools needed to easy to understand technique for getting that project done just right. Uh, I think this gives it a really nice clean look underneath here. Instant access to free video content streamed anytime to any device. Featuring nearly 200 videos, 50 hours of content, all sorted by category and task. Who says home construction is overwhelming? Not with Tim.